I think that one of the most important things of all is to know specifically where your vulnerabilities and strengths are. They're doing a very careful, accurate, field-tested self-assessment. When I say field-tested, I mean you check it out. You take it into the environment, into the arena of confrontation and encounter in the now. And you take it to your most aggressive adversaries. The most aggressive adversaries you have, you take it to them. And you see how, what kind of feedback you get from them. And you keep adjusting and readjusting to that feedback. You learn from it. You hold it prisoner. You question it thoroughly. You take nothing for granted. You set up your models via, via gestalt programming. That's the Fritz Perls chair psychodrama where you separate yourself in order to discover who you are functionally. You have the different chairs and you become different personas predicated on your experience with all those personas out there. Those personas represent social combatants, actors and actresses out there. Remember, everything social, and I do mean everything, is, a, is nothing but a performance. It's nothing but a performance in the final analysis. What else could it be? What else could it mean? It's all a magnificent or not so magnificent performance. It's a show. It's a role. It's an experiment and it's an experience. You're making an inquiry, a genuine inquiry, which means you don't know the answers to begin with before the inquiry has begun. You're asking the question just like a good prosecutor. Only this time the one you're prosecuting is yourself, which is the ultimate prosecution. Notice how serious I am. These are very serious issues. I'm not jumping up and down. I'm not sparky. I'm not giving you miles and miles, aisles of aisles of wonderful smiles. Serious business. This is philosophy. In this case, it has to be practical. All advice has to be only practical has to be field tested and has to be workable and it has to be custom made to fit the individual you're talking to. That means you have to come into that man's environment and push him in the environment, push him to the limits in that environment. Test it, test it, test it over and over again. Don't assume anything, test it out. You have no entitlement. If you're following what I'm saying, you'll notice there's no room for any entitlement here because it's all an experiment. Why is there no room for any entitlement? You can't follow the leader. You can't follow the guy who has a so-called charisma, is getting everything that you want and making it look easy. You don't know the backstory here. There's so much you don't know about. So much he's hiding. So much double talking he's doing to look good. So much double binding he's doing. I've seen a slick, these slick salesmen, marketers, ask the question and then answer their own question and, and talk for me. And talk for how, how many assholes have you come across in the environment? You talk to them and they're already, they're already giving me the answer that they want to hear from me before I've even had a chance to respond or do anything. This is called high-pressure sales, which all of it's a performance. All of us, we're all combatants on a stage. The stage is the stage of life, and it's all a performance. It's all a game. That's all it is. What else could it be? It's all a game. Nothing is real, and nothing to get hung about. It's all a game.
It's all a show. You gotta know the right question to ask. You gotta know the right answers to anticipate. But you shouldn't be doing it. It's objective or it's nothing. It's objective or it's nothing or it doesn't exist. You have to learn to use your opponent, and everybody's your opponent out there. It takes a long time to establish a so-called rapport. A long, long time. Don't let Tony Robbins fool you. It's not easy. You can only get what you want, an agreement, an arrangement, the conversation. That means something if you can establish a rapport. And Tony Robbins is always looking for a strategy, a template that he can apply, apply generally that will work all the time, regardless of how he puts it. In my opinion, this is my reading of the Tony Robbins marketing, the Tony Robbins pr presentation. He's good at what he does, though. It's a formula. It's a formula approach and a formula answer, two-dimensional answer. I'm thinking I'm talking here in three dimensions. I'm talking here from looking around. I'm talking here from developing accurate observational skills that can see everything. You have to see 360 degrees around. I'm talking anticipation. Looking, knowing what to expect and getting ready for it before, like a good fighter, good pugilist. He trains hard to anticipate that left hook so he doesn't get hit with it. And counter. Not just that he has to build counter punching. This is where uh, old man Trump got it right. Winning's everything. You, won't be, you, you can't do anything if you don't win, however you win. I don't care how you win. I'm not applying it. There's, there's no standards, there's no values, there's no ethics to winning. Don't let anybody kid you when we're talking street smart, street tough, practical. Everything has to be practical, has to be field testable and workable out there in the toughest context of all. That means in the training you have to build so many obstacles into the training, distractions, confusions. You want to experience it in practice and training. Practice, practice, practice. Like somebody asked the great Jerry Lewis, and I call him great. He's a multi-talented, the great Jerry Lewis. I don't believe uh, Carey, Jim Carey could hold a candle to Lewis. There's no comparison. Jim Carey's good. He's got the height. He's got the pretty boy face. He's got all that going, but he could not hold a candle to, to the maestro, Jerry Lewis. And Jerry said, "How do?" someone asked Jerry the question, how do I get to be like you? And Jerry gave him the right answer. There's only one answer, said Jerry Lewis. Get a job and practice, practice, practice. That's all you can do. There's no secrets. There's some ideas. And what you have to do, like the great actor... The great actor said, glean, steal. You see something you like that somebody does, steal it. Because he stole it from somebody else. Michael Caine is the great actor I'm talking about. One of our treasures. Steal it, glean. He stole it from somebody else, believe me, trust me on that. You can't do stand-up comedy, you can't sing unless you're aggressive by nature. It takes a lot of aggressiveness, so everything has to be done. Double them up! It has to be done very quickly, very loudly, immediately, and with a lot of aggressiveness, a lot of noise. 
so he learns to act in the confusion. So he learns to sing in the din of confusion, heckling, confrontation, hard resistance, hard pushback, and can do it in every single environment so he's not a prima donna. That's the thing. To squeeze out the, the fear, the sponge loaded with fear until it's dry, Marciano. Keep on punching, Rocky Marciano said it. Put a lot of hard bark on yourself and don't be afraid to do what you have to do in any environment. So he has no fear of the environment, no anticipatory fear of the environment. He's not afraid of his whatever opponent, however he wants to come on, I'm ready for him. That's what you, I'm prepared for, I'm not afraid of him. There's no type. There's no specific opponent that I'm afraid of, or I shouldn't be, if my preparation is good. Fear comes out of not being prepared. Fear comes of thinking out of thinking you're a lot better than you really are. You're only as good as your next test. I said it, listen to me. You're only as good as your next test, your next performance. You may do good now, the next one may show you to be a complete disaster. May totally expose the emperor has no clothes. And that's a good thing, not a bad thing. You're learning how to put on clothes that fit you. You dig what I'm saying? You not hear this from Dean Graziosos or from Tony Robbins. He can't do that because Spark is so busy, enthusiasm, giving you miles and miles of smiles and miles and miles of chomped up energy, phony energy, herd mentality. This is pure group psychology, pure manipulation, your herd hypnosis, in my opinion. Group psychology, very important. We're all individual. Fritz Perls got it right. Fritz Perls says, I don't do uh, individual therapy. I do individual therapy in a group context. Things happen a lot faster. I use my group as a chorus. After I put the client, however I want to say it. I call it my man, the combatant. After I put him in a corner, I corner my combatant. Got him cornered and pressured him to, to, to stay in the now and tell me exactly what's going in the, in the now and not phoning up. Because I push through, I talk through, I power through the fog of phoniness, alibi, excuses. And then I always have the group as the mirror, as the conscience. And believe me, I instigate them to make sure they give up the truth. This is not a coda meeting. It's not a 12-step meeting. It's not a kindly, kindly, gentle, gentle. I'm okay. You're okay. You win, I win. It doesn't even sound good in theory. It's absolutely false, practically speaking. But that's another, that's another conversation. These are called conversations with a stranger, what I'm doing right now. These are things that need to be said. And now I'm going into the real subject matter here. Of course, I'm a short man. I'm five, two and a half. I got a big moon face, a humpty dumpty head, projected head, 46 inches of fat guts and terrible proportions, all right? So as soon as I come out in a social situation in the arena of confrontation and encounter, I am ridiculed, I am mocked, directly or indirectly. I'm gossiped about. Even I haven't even, hadn't even done anything. And already I'm a 13th stepper from a coda point of view. Already I'm a predator. Already I'm an expert. I hadn't even done anything. Just showed up. It's predicated on the way I look. It's predicated on how we've been conditioned to think about people predicated on how they look, their phenotype. Your phenotype is your physical presence and behavior in a social context in the arena of encounter and confrontation. 
Everything is encounter and confrontation. Everything out there is struggle. You're fighting for everything. It's a fight. You're fighting for your life. I spoke to a great lounge lizard. And I said, when you go down to your happy hour or whatever you call that, symbolic humanity to try to cut corners. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with cutting corners and trying to get through all the bullshit it takes to establish a rapport. Now, if you're tall, if you're a pretty boy, you have pretty boy privilege. You can cut through that a lot easier. Man like me go has to go through. I don't miss a rock in the road. I don't miss a nail in the ground. I don't miss a hail of rocks thrown at me when I get out there. I don't miss anything. My path is strewn with obstacles. I go through an obstacle course when I go out there. I'm talking for the short man. I'm talking for my own. Everything I get out of there, every victory, every gain I have to fight hard for, I have to win it. It don't come gratis. And it shouldn't. I tell my short, short small man, you're not do any entitlement. You're not do any fairness. They don't have to make it. It's not supposed to be fair out there. It's competitive. And when I say competitive, there's no such thing as equity. There's no such thing as a phony socialism to back yourself up. Now, when I say phony social, I'm not talking about Marxism. That's different. That's a philosophy. We're talking, that's different. I'm talking a utopian socialist thinking, which your conservative, hardcore conservative, Con Hannity, Moron Levin, and that ilk, in my opinion, this is all opinion, go for. No. But what is true is the fact that it's very, very competitive. And the most important point of all is they're not supposed to make it easy for you. They're not supposed to let you win, period. And we begin with that premise. And everything is an afterthought to that. You hear what I'm saying? You heard it. I said it. So you do whatever you can. For the short, small man, an anomaly like me, your deception, hypocrisy, gamesmanship is the truth for us. You heard what I'm saying. That's the truth for us. What's uh, the pretty boy's pie is my poison and vice versa. But I have to. I live, I live in a world with a pretty boy, where your celebrity, where your appealing, charming, smiley boy, I call him Spark, your sweet personality that smiles and got the height, the TDH, tall, dark, and handsome crap. Now he's the one who sets the standards. He's the ideal. He's the dreamboat. He's the stud muffin. And all that that implies. This is the conversation that needs to take place, and I deliver it. You need strategies. It all ha it's all a show out there. It's all a performance. Nothing's real and nothing to get hung about. Strawberry fields forever.